Hi guys, Dorota Polska International, new artist and educator here and today I'm in with uh, Carly. I'm going to show you how to do a beautiful uh, mermaid effect nails like the nice and sparkly. So uh, just to save you a hassle of watching all through it, I have kept those two nails empty so I show you how to sculpt them. And then on the rest of the nails we will apply those beautiful gel polish with the mermaid effect. And of course, because it's a winter time, we are going for a knitted look. So I have pushed back her cuticles and now I'm going to use a tiny bit of the blue scrap, which is a nail dehydrator to clean the surface of the natural nail plate. So that's my standard procedure. And then I will create scratches on the natural nail plate, like make sure there is no shiny places. So our gel is going to stick in really well. If this is the first tutorial you're ever watching, uh, check the previous ones as there is lots of great uh, useful hints and tips for every nail tech. Uh, I've got some stuff which is very basic, like for a beginner, and I've got some stuff which is for kind of more advanced nail technicians where we're painting, uh, say example, an Olaf from the Frozen. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty cool tutorial, you can check these guys out as well. So I have removed any dust. And then I dehydrate again. The reason why I dehydrate again is like, I mean, Carly's nails are fantastic. They, you can see they go really nice and white when I have prepped them. And that's the best client you can get because those nails are never lifting. Um, but sometimes we get a clients which got really oily nails and then you want to really dehydrate them before you start filing. Otherwise you would get the oils from the nails into the uh, nail plate and you might get the lifting. I've got my nail form and I'm just going to gently trim it on the sides so it allows me to pinch it a little bit more. Now the previous set was done on the tips so I will try to kind of match it the shape of the tips with the forms. I mean basically on the forms the sculpted nails so I don't let the clients look what I'm doing. Um, the shape on the forms is always much nicer than on the tips. Um, but yeah, we'll just match it the tip shape. Uh, the reason why I don't let the clients to look what I'm doing is because sometimes they help us too much with the form application and then when the problem starts, like the form goes squint or we cannot place it in. So I'm tearing the sticker out, place it behind, open the tabs. I've got also a tutorial on like a really detailed uh, form application as well. Go and check that out. Um, and then I explain different type of nails. So I'm just pre-pinching it again and then hide the client view but not yours guys and uh, once i get the form in the middle i'm start closing this form to a nice shape and this is the quickest way to apply the forms like for most of the clients i really like it now i'm not going to over pinch it just because with the tips we cannot pinch it too much so i really kind of trying to match them with the previous set once the, the forms are applied i'm using an extra nail prep just on the entire nail plate so i'm applying it on and you have to wait a couple seconds for it to dry once it's dry we are going to apply the universal air bond uh, we are going to apply the universal air bond now i've cleaned them um, by pushing back the cuticle sense giving us scratches we have cleaned the, any tissue which might be on the nail plate and then the rest cuticle work I'm doing always after I have put the gel um, because we're talking about the dead tissue which is on the top of the nail folds uh, but not on the nail plate. From the nail plate we have to remove everything completely. I'm going to do a sculpting with the fiber gel and a soft pink and it's a pretty nice and natural color. So once my air bond is dry I'm just going to pick up a scope of the product and apply it nice and thin layer. So I'm really pressing the product hard into the nail, like really decent press. And the reason for it is like, I want the gel to stick in really well to the natural nail. I'm going to do two at the same time. She've got not the biggest nails and we are not going for a huge extension. So I can do it two at the one time. So apply it first of all on the nail plate and then on the join place. So that's the place where our extension is joining. Do all the free edge and I always like to do it more than I need it. Like it doesn't take me too long to file it with the file. 
So I rather to do it a little bit more just so there is no places which I might miss. Okay, and another one at the free edge. Tiny bit more product. And then once I'm happy with this first layer, I'm going to cook it in the lamp. Okay, inside. So on this hand, I can show you my next step. So after they filed, but I will show you how to file this nails as well. I'm going to tidy up the cuticles. So I'm just taking a nipper and we don't have any on the nail plate, so I'm just removing the dry parts of the nail fold. You cannot overdo it. If you remove the living tissue, first of all, it will cause to overgrown, and then secondly, you can also hurt the client or yourself as well. So you really want to remove the very, very dry bits and pieces. Like, don't overdo it. Especially that's when we remove the dust from the nails it looks much better always they they kind of look a bit dry just before we completely finish the service okay so my other hand is cooking and i will be doing it kind of in between that's great i take your right hand And what you could do is you could pull the form down now, like we don't need it anymore. Just so you can see what you're doing. So I just pull the form down and now I'm applying my shape of the nails and an apex. So nice and firm layer through the entire nail, like everywhere, completely everywhere. Nice and thin layer, nice and thin layer. Then once I'm happy with this thin layer, I'm picking up the decent scope of the product on the one side of my brush and place the client finger down the way and work one side, other side, one side, other side to shape your nail. Don't go too close to the sides just because otherwise the product is going to run in there. So I'm really more concentrating on working through the middle. Perfect insight. Because we apply quite a decent amount of the product, I have switched off the lamp for a couple seconds just to reduce the heat spike. If you would feel it hot, just take it out and put it back inside, okay? Thank you. So any changes on the filling of your nail, just take it out. And by taking the hand out, we are kind of slowing down the curing process so the clients wouldn't feel the heat spike. I find it for most of the clients, those gels are pretty good, like regarding the heat spike. So they are not obviously, they are not too bad. Now we have pushed the cuticles once, but now I need to push them second time. Just because by the time we have filed them and we apply the gel, they kind of go back a little bit and I want my product to get really close to the cuticle so even after a few weeks the nails are still going to look nice and not too overgrown perfect I take the other hand okay and we are going to build up this nail as well now so nice and thin layer through the entire nail like really close to the cuticle almost touching it but not touching like fill up any missing bits and pieces very close to the cuticle same on the other side like very close to the cuticle capping the free edge and then once you have covered the entire nail take a big scoop of the product on the one side of your brush and then work through the middle one side other side one side other side one side other side 
So I'm really concentrating on working through the middle and side. Okay, so now you know how to how I'm sculpting the nails. The shaping is really important, and I show you uh, guys how I shape them as well. So here we are going to paint the color, which is hundred and a five. No, is it hundred five? No, I don't know uh, which number is it, but we call it hundred five in a salon. It's a pink daisy opal from a perfect match, and I quite like this color. It's a kind of pinky, beigey, really nice and beautiful color. Okay, so I'm just applying this color on the entire nails. And you have seen me guys doing like working with the chromes effects so you will love also the mermaid effect as well i think it's such a beautiful one and clients always love it as well we actually had one lady popping in just uh, for a sun bit and she's seen the mermaid like was asking like can this go on any top uh, any kind of color <laughs> so yes it can go also on any kind of color and on different colors it will div give completely different effect and I actually might, need, might do some nice designs with those as well I can show you on the tip tutorial as well because it's a fantastic stuff you can do for your clients change so this hand is fully cooked and now I can shape those ugly nails into nice ones <laughs> <laughs> But the reason why I leave it always those kind of like is the pants. I find it usually with the shorter ones. I tend to go and leave it more kind of free edge, uh, which is misshaped, because this is so thin that's only a couple touches of the file. Like I even don't have to press it uh, strong, and you can guys see it like how easy it is to file it. So it's really not a long time to to make this nail look beautiful and this way I'm not going to miss any any product like on the sides or on the length and I find it is, is better to do it this way so most of my product is in the middle you can also see like how the apex is looking on this nail and then on the sides I've got really just a little bit of product so the nail is not going to be too thick so once I file that I'm just going to blend it around the cuticle area so blended it all nice. Okay, check my hairline. And now I've got a little bulk of the product on this side. So a couple scratches there. And that start looking better. <laughs> okay, and what I'm doing now is I'm just smoothing all new all over. So I'm just going and doing couple motions like this. Check the length and that's just about correct okay I'm checking the hairline which is just the end of the nail to see how the how smooth it is and if there is any places which needs to have a bigger touch of the file and you can see there is even some place which is still shiny and that's the place which I didn't file you don't have to file totally all the nail if it's good and perfect you just don't have to file it okay so nice and straight nice and straight by doing those two straight lines you know where you are wrong so currently it's a little bit stiff-handed which make it a pretty difficult for me <laughs> to 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 shape the nails and um, this is pretty important stuff guys for you as well when you've got a client which is really stiff handed you need to watch it uh, I can show you on my crooked fingers so especially this finger you can see it it just doesn't go straight and if my client will hold the finger like stressed 
you can kind of make an ugly shape or like misshape needle so quite good is to kind of give them a little gentle masha massage and a shake of their hand and then you can see how the how the fingers are going so you can shape it, it properly okay so i've got a big bulk of the product at the free edge of this needle and to get rid of that i'm just filing all this bulk of the product Just so the end of it is nice and thin. Okay, blend everything around the cuticle area. Smooth the free edge and I still feel like I've got a bulk of the product but just at the end so now I'm not doing too much of the pressure because if I would do too much of the pressure I could overfile some places and I really don't want that You can see how gently I'm filing because I really want to smooth out the places which are misshaped. Now we are going to take a buffer and we are going to make the snails nice and smooth. So protect the client's fingers just so you don't cut them. I'm also pushing back the cuticles again blending all this part in here you don't want any places where you could catch the product because this is what will cause the lifting as well okay so all the way around the cuticle perfect those free edge i really want to have it nice and even and then start smoothing entire nail So I'm using a 100-180 grid buffer and it's a pretty sharp buffer so it creates enough scratches for a gel polish to stick into that. But if you would use this buffer on the acrylic needles you could maybe smooth it out too much and then it wouldn't be, uh, the gel wouldn't maybe stick properly. Okay I'm doing the same with this one. So really brushing away all those places like they have to be all nicely joined in same at the top push it kind of back blend that out touch up the free edge Okay, and then that's our nails filed. So they're all nice and shaped. And then I will just remove the cuticles on this hand and start painting this nails as well. The desired color. But let's do a second layer on this hand. So you know how they have been sculpted and then we got them to this stage where we're painting a second layer of the color.
Okay, pull those nail folds down. Like you want the gel polish to be covering the entire nail, not only the middle. And also by buffing those nails, like I feel like uh, the gel polish looks nicer as well. Inside. For a mermaid effect, I'm going to cure it exactly a 60 seconds now, this hand. So like a proper 60 seconds cure. And I'm using a um, Sun UV lamp, like it is Sun X5 Plus. Um, lamp because you guys also asked me this question as well great so we can tidy up those cuticles currently actually got pretty good cuticles And the reason why I keep um, the cuticle work, like this part of the cuticle at the end is, first of all, when we filing, uh, we kind of irritating the skin. Like, I mean, you can see it, she has no cuts or her fingers aren't red or anything like that. But even if we don't see it, we do irritate the skin. And same when we do the cuticle removal, it's actually not the cuticle, it's a nail fold, uh, if we're talking about the nail anatomy. But if we're removing this parts as well, again, we kind of irritating this part of the skin and then working with the products like Uncure products, gel polishes and gel the inhibition layer, there is no way we would not touch those parts. And if these parts are solid and protected like with the chunk and bits and pieces of the skin, the clients are kind of okay, less prone to the allergies. But if we would have the sensitive area, like, I mean, sometimes I can see like the cuticle work and the nail fold work to be so excessive. And then on those excessive work, uh, people are applying all this product. Like, see, now I'm cleaning, like, okay, I'm trying to don't go, but there is no way you don't touch these places. And same when we've got the inhibition layer from the gel polish. There is no way you wouldn't touch this place when removing the inhibition layers. And I don't want to expose my clients um, into those kind of products like I want them to enjoy the uh, nail enhancements for as many years as they wish and I'm working as a nail tech science 2005 and I have never ever in all my career had an allergic reaction on the client or on myself like you can really clearly spot when someone is sensitive to the product like I have applied on my left hand uh, acrylics and I can see it the difference in my cuticle and the skin around so I'm kind of a little bit sensitive uh, and if I wouldn't stop it using that certain product that's mean I could become allergic to it um, so really think about those kind of little details and the things like that especially that's the last few years the amount of the allergic reactions is unbelievable and i think the main reason for it is the e-file cuticle works where the where the client's nail folds are overdone and then we are going to apply the products on them perfect change your hands so for this part i need to take my glove off and we are going to use the indigo mermind effect it's an absolutely fantastic work and they've got um this one is just an mermaid effect i mean it is written in the polish but it's just a mermaid effect they also got a mermaid black but this one is kind of like a really beautiful pinkish one so what i'm doing because my nails are too long that's another tip <laughs> for you because my nails are so long i never cannot reach the pot 
I have to pour it to the lid and then pick it up from the lid on my finger, okay? So that's what I'm going to do it, just like this. <laughs> that's all the little hacks like. So obviously, guys, if you're wearing the needles which are my size, just go like this. So what I'm doing now first, I'm just tapping. So I'm just tapping the product on. And with the mermaid effect, you can get a different kind of results. Uh, you can sprinkle on the top, so that will be a sugar effect. You can kind of um, rub it in or you can dab it in. So in here, I'm going to kind of rub it, dab it in. So I don't want to have like a kind of this mirrory look to it. You can still achieve it with the mermaid effect, but I don't want it. I want more sparkly, more kind of rough surface for this design. So what I'm doing is I'm just tapping tapping it in okay so just tap 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 now just to speed up i take this hand no no don't put it in perfect and this one just stays away from the light perfect <laughs> got a heart attack because my lady wanted to put the hand inside and i was scared it will cure and then i will have those rough bits and pieces so never put the, after you apply the mermaid, so kind of messy look. If you would put it to the lamp, those kind of sticking out missing bits and pieces would cure and you will have really uneven surface. And I really don't want that. I will also show you what I'm doing. So the mermaid effect is going to last a really nice and long time on the client. And I do it with all my chromes, all my pigments this way. And they do really last if I if I do this application. Okay, and side. Okay, so let's finish this hand so I pick up again a tiny amount of the product and I massage it even more like I want to get rid of excess of this product okay so for a kind of mirrorly look I would clean my finger off like take a tiny bit of the blue scrap because obviously we've got a tiny bit of the inhibition layer so I'll clean my finger out let it dry and then I would massage it in more the same way like I would massage it for a chrome. But I don't want this look. I don't want them to be too mirrory. I want those kind of uh, separate particles of the glitter to be visible. Now, my next step, and this step is extremely important. I take my file. So I take my file and I scratch the free edge. By scratching the free edge, I'm kind of creating a rough surface uh, for my top coat to stick into that like really important one okay and then take a brush and this is like a facial brush um i got them from ebay but i can't gonna give you a link i have no clue like where they are it's sometimes hard to get them but this brush is fantastic because it's so soft and strong at the same time so it's soft enough to don't give me a scratches over this look but also like removes the bits and pieces now i've got old top coat like old brush from the top and i'm going to pour a little bit of my brand new top coat and the reason for it is i don't want the glitter to contaminate my good top coat so i'll be a bit struggling with the top coat application so i've got an old top coat and what i'm doing now is i'm applying the top coat on the entire nail okay cap this free edge look how my brush is splitting like and really properly capping those free edge and this effect is so beautiful on the nails i really love it guys like on the blue nails oh my gosh it looks so amazing like it's unbelievable on the purple nails or imagine doing an ombre i have done like quite a lot of ombres with the mermaid effect and it's I think it's kind of almost even more sparkly than the chrome nails. So the chrome gives you those kind of mirror finish and check my tutorials on the chrome as well. I have actually 
um, done some red ones as well and and other ones there we are okay so once my nails are top coated we change the hands apply the mermite on those fingers tap 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 and the another difference so the chromes you normally would apply it on the no wipe top gel and this one you applying directly on the gel polish inhibition layer okay so you need the inhibition layer for this effect so tap 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 okay and because now my finger is a bit dirty i'm going to clean it and some gel polishes are drier they have less inhibition layer some gel polishes are kind of having more inhibition layer so i always try to do it kind of carefully this one has quite a lot of inhibition layer so that's why i don't want to overdo it i don't want to get the places which are missing the product okay that's why i'm so careful with the application but some of the gel polishes are a bit drier and then you could just kind of rub it in and it's it gives you an absolutely stunning effect as well but for a chrome no wipe top gel for a mirror mind we use the inhibition layer okay now i'm just tidy this up tidy this up and then we quickly do um, the design on the ring finger as well just so we've got kind of those wintery feel to this set so old top coat no not old top coat what we do first who guess scratch yes we do scratch and the same like i do it for the chromes as well those couple scratches make the top coats to stick really well at the fridge what else you could do is if you don't want to give it a scratches you could uh, use the primer and you could just uh, touch the free edge of the nails with the primer okay so just apply the top coat cut the free edge Cap the free edge again, nice and properly. <clears throat> if you've got the client which is really maybe a heavy-handed or a client... Oh gosh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear it, guys? I almost broke a lady finger. <laughs> that was a little crack. How you call it? Knuckle crack? <laughs> Hope you didn't feel it. Oh no, I didn't feel it at all. <laughs> so I'm applying, yeah, but coming back to the subject, what you could do if you've got a really kind of uh, heavy client, handed clients, change, what you could do is take the soak of gel polish top coat and apply this top coat first and then apply the no wipe top gel okay but don't apply no wipe top gel on top of the no wipe top gel because it's like applying a top coat on top of the glass it will peel and that's why maybe your foams don't last i'm using the d-liner brush just to squiggle quick jumper design and the paint on french gel and we do have um we do have high shine no wipe top gel on them so now i can just paint the design which is going to be almost like a wee 3D effect. No top coat over it. So you have seen me guys doing those kind of uh, jumper looks before. And basically what I'm doing is almost like a painting number fours. Don't put the gel polish or any kind of gels on your skin, on your fingers. I've got my long nails in there and I slap it on my nail. Again, we're talking about the allergic reactions. Nice line. 
No, that's it. Another one. Okay, then I'm going to take a dotting tool. And do just couple dots on the side. One, two, three. And now we are going to sprinkle it with the mermite because I want those kind of a jumpery look to it. So I've got the mermite and I'm just sprinkling it on top. It will look messy to start with, but don't worry, we will clean it all. So remove the excess by tapping in. Okay, it looks messy, you don't know no, what is lovely. going on, but once we kick it, we can clean it. Change. It will be nicer once we clean it. <laughs> oh, it looks really nice. So Carly is a kind of my new client. This is only a rebalance um, kind of which we have done it on those nails. And I still need to train her up how to hold the hand. And she's so excited about the things, which I'm glad, you know, guys, it's so nice to see your client be happy and excited about the things. Because once you get a client, which is like, I don't know, maybe 10 year old client, they are not going like, oh my goodness, this is so beautiful because they've got some stuff <laughs> done first time or like, um, and then when you got those kind of new clients, they see things for the first time and it's like so, so nice to see the smile on their face. And also, I'm so happy as well because Kelly almost let me do it wherever I want to do it. Uh, which is awesome as well. And I feel like we've got kind of similar tastes. She likes the stuff I would like on my nails. So this is very easy for me to kind of um, find the best kind of designs. So last time we have done it really beautiful. Actually, I loved it, your last set as well. We have done it really beautiful uh, pink and white ombre with some swirly beads and tiny bits of the glitter. And that was awesome design too. But if you, sorry, have to hold my breath. But if you're big in your nail tech, like doing a mermaid powder is so amazing. Like, and my clients always love it. Like they, they was even at some time of the year, like when everyone was coming and wanted like those mermaid nails because they love the sparkle. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we'll just sprinkle, sprinkle. Maybe just a little bit to the side. I just put a tiny wee drop more on this side as well. Okay, and then once the sprinkle, we are going to change and cook this one as well. Okay, so just going to give a final cook and then clean the client's hands because to see the true effect of the set we have created, we really have to clean the hands and make them all nice and pretty. So I'm taking this hand. Perfect. And you can see it is all ugly and messy. And now I'm just taking a brush and remove the excess of the powder. So the powder was coming off from different parts and stays only on the places where we had the paint on French gel. And now with the wipe, I'm just going to clean it. So clean all the dust from the nails so they look nice and pretty. <laughs> Oh, they look lovely. Yeah, it's, it's so nice, like, because they reflect the light in different direction, like, I think it's really, uh, really nice effect, especially oh, with the mermaid. really effective. Mm -hmm. And then apply the cuticle oil. Don't flood the client's nails with the cuticle oil, like, you don't want to overly too much. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's so nice. I love this effect. I want oh, my so pink nice. nails. I want <laughs> nails in pink. Um, and the other hand is ready as well. So oh, I can show perfect. you guys the second hand as well. So you can see like how messy this one is and then how precise 
design is showing on on this needle so i'm just going to clean this one and then take a beautiful thumbnail picture thumbnail picture how you say it <laughs> thumb thumb thumbnail oh i'm rubbish at pronouncing and also <laughs> i don't know what it is <laughs> um it's like um like uh, no no like a picture for um youtube for oh, right a thumbnail they call it i think but anyway guys i have realized that at the end of the videos i keep saying glittery hacks and that's it's wrong i should say glittery hooks is it hooks hacks I how you pronounce it no it's like when you're hugging someone oh how you pronounce it i don't know i don't know what i will is. hug you uh-huh Glittery hugs. Yeah, it must be glittery hugs. Yeah. Hugs. Okay. I think I pronounced the A letter too strong, and then it's oh. coming as a glittery hugs. Oh. So no, I'm not saying glittery hugs, but it will go as well because it's a kind <laughs> of like glittery trips, tricks and tips for you and hugs. But no, it is the hugs, the cuddle, the cuddles. Oh, that's what I meant to say. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, this is so bad. But yeah, that's the final final results of this set, and then. You can have a wheel like that. So glittery hacks and bye for now. Hope to see you soon.